In this episode of Mind Pump, by the way, Mind Pump is the top fitness and health podcast. We're in number the world. one. Here's what we talked about in this episode. Now, of course, we answer fitness and health questions. That's a little later in the episode. The first 40 minutes, we cover studies, uh, current events. We talk about what's happening in our lives. We mentioned one of our sponsors. Let me give you a breakdown. So we start out by talking about Justin's experiment Ooh. with Organifi's Green Juice and Pure. So Organifi's Green Juice is a blend of green superfood powder. You mix it with water. It's got some health benefits. They've got some ashwagandha in there. And then their Pure is a nootropic-based gut health supplement. So you take that and it helps your brain uh, with its function. It gives you a little bit of mental vitality. Sharp. So we gave it to him and then we waited about 20 to 30 minutes to see if what would happen. And he came out with some interesting facts. So yeah. I think it worked. One of them was wrong, but yeah. <laughs> then we talked about Netflix and their new analytics and how they're promoting their shows. It's actually real eff uh, effective. We talked about Pete Davidson, the comedian, and Ariana Gonda, uh, Grande, Grande, excuse me, a little bit of uh, controversy there. Mm -hmm. I talked about the coronavirus and the hysteria surrounding it. Then we talked a little bit about whether or not viruses are actually alive. Believe it or not, there's actually a debate in the scientific world about that. Whoa. We talked about the Fed pumping more money into the market, reversing the downward trend. Boy, the real drop is probably going to happen. It's going to be real big at some point. Uh, Justin talked about the cold calls he's making for a charity and for sexual favors. Yeah, right to the bank, baby. By the way, Organifi, if you want a discount on their products, we have a mind pump discount for you. Just go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. You'll get 20% off all of their products. All right. Here's the fitness questions that we answered. The first one, this person says, are SARMs a useful tool or a gimmick? So SARMs are new drugs that are out in the market, available over the counter as research chemicals, promising to build muscle, not lower testosterone, and not have any side effects. Sounds too good to be true? Mm. Well, you know the answer to that, so listen to that part of the episode. SARMs. Next question, uh, what exercises are best for improving vertical jump? So we talk about how you can get more hops in that part of the episode, and I'm not talking about beer. Mm. The next question, Bummer. this person says, hey, does resistance training and nutrition play a factor for women who want to conceive? So we talk all about training and nutrition around conception. And the final question, what has fatherhood taught Adam, Justin, and myself? So we talk all about being dads in that part of the episode. Also, all month long, our newest program, MAPS Powerlift, is 50, that's right, half off. So MAPS Powerlift is a full powerlifting workout program. So if you want to get started with powerlifting, if you want to compete in your first competition, or if you just want to get better at your bench press, your deadlift, and your squat, or you just like to build lots of muscle mm. or speed up your metabolism. This is the first time it's been on sale like this, right? This is it. MAPS Powerlift half off. Here's how you get the half off discount. Go to mapspowerlift.com. That's M A P S P O W E R L I F T.com and use the code POWER50. That's P O W E R 50, no space for the discount. Yes, I'm right. a little off right now. So, yeah. The, Sal just gave me a concoction and uh, it's what you call it, nootropics or nootropics. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You're, uh, we're doing the same experiment well, it with, matters. with you that I did. So, a few podcasts ago, I took. Uh, the Organifi Pure and Green. Yeah. And it's 30, I timed it, it's 30 to 40 minutes, depending on empty stomach, digestive process, whatever. Took me a little longer. And it kicks in. <laughs> it did. It was like 45. Yeah. You, you yeah. feel the buzz. Adam did it and it happened to him. Remember, he was like, all of a sudden he was smart for a second. I was yeah. a little late for the, late for the party, <laughs> brief yeah. moment. Yeah. All of a sudden we're like, whoa, that was yeah. pretty. Came out of the woodwork. Like, oh, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so we got 30 minutes uh, for. For you, right, we'll put it. We'll put a ticker on. Yeah, let's see what happens. Okay. So anyway, but yeah, make sure you put your your headphones in the right jack. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's how I'm starting the day. So we'll yeah. see how this goes from you, here. You know what I hate, dude? That it's happened to me a few times when we're podcasting because I'm. It's very hard for me to sit still. That's why I have this hand gripper. It's helping. <laughs> yeah. But I'll shift my and I feel bad for the people recording the podcast on video. By the way, our all of our podcasts are on video now mm. as well. Yeah. So if you want to see. Just how unattractive we are. Just go to the Mind Pump hey, uh, podcast. You're uh, welcome. YouTube channel. But anyway, I feel bad because we have people recording the podcast on audio on on uh, with video, and about 
one or two times through the podcast, they always have to adjust my camera. Mm-hmm. You guys notice that? Yeah. You're because so fidgety. I'm sliding down or I'm moving to the side. or So what I hate, what I do is because I move so much, I with my foot, I accidentally kick the wire <laughs> and my, my headphones will unplug. Huh. And so I can't hear my, but I know that the podcast is going, so I got to keep going. Have yeah. you done that? Yeah, you also That's so that hard. You also twice. stare at the TV a lot for a guy who has a photographic memory. I can never figure that out. Oh, up there. Yeah, you're always looking up there. Well, it's either well, that. There. Everyone, everyone thinks there's a fly on the wall. I yeah, know, I see it too, yeah. though. You know what? I never see it. I also so. do that when I'm just thinking, so it just happens to be in the right. That's what I. Well, I know yeah. that about you. I'm like, yeah. the, he, it's not like he needs to look at the television for for cues of anything like that. No. But he, you tend to do that. Every no. time. If there was one on this side, I'd totally would be drawn to it like a fly well, looking at light. You know, you, you need one because you never fucking cover your own bullet <laughs> points. Know. Justin's like, hey, Doug, remind me Wait. to talk about Hugo Boss, this, yeah, this, and that. <laughs> and the fucking intro's over, and I'm like, hey, did you want to cover hey, any bro. of those points that you had Doug fucking take notes for, I'm bro? just trying to be present. You know what I mean? I'm not <laughs> oh, trying to be all okay. calculated. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough, fair yeah, enough. Fair enough. Just, like, off the cuff, bro. Yeah. He is like a present. Um, <laughs> I am. Yeah, bro. dude. Unwrap I, me. You, you, know speak, I mean? you know, with TVs, did you guys, back in the day when you guys used to do cardio... Um, did you guys like watching stuff on TV when you did cardio? Was that a thing? Did, it, did you guys did you no. did you utilize that when you? Compet- I liked watching people. I don't know if that makes it no, creepy, I, but that like was, in the gym, yeah, like watching what people are doing and like uh, some shenanigans. Yeah, me too. Music and podcasts, like when I'm on like list cardio for an hour. When I was competing and I was doing it every day for a while, uh, I didn't watch TV. I don't think I. Matter of fact, it, with all the TVs there. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like throws me off because I have to look at a screen that's up above me. So or... you would just watch people working out, yeah, like I... a like a creep, totally. Yeah. And now, what kind of people would you focus on, Justin? On um, the the interesting ones, mm-hmm. you know, the mm-hmm. the ones that that usually are Sponsored using by lemon. Yeah, well, the, the, that is interesting and captures my attention sometimes. <laughs> But usually it was the ones that were using the machines in a different way than it was intended. Mm. There's always that going on. That's it's my, not like a unique thing. This happens on a daily. Dude, my f- I, to this day, I've never seen anything quite as silly as this, and I've seen it twice. I've seen people use the lat pull-down machine. They'll pull the handles down, like or or hang from the handles, so and then like twist, just twist, with a, like trunk twist. Oh my god, I thought I was the only one that saw that. Why? What is that doing? I have no idea. There's no resistance twisting. No, You're just twisting. It feels no. good though, huh? Yeah. It feels good. You though. do that? No, I don't do that. But you, I mean, it does. How do you feel know good. it feels good then? Because I've tried oh. it before. I've seen people push with their shoulders the leg press. You know, like drive into it like that, even oh. when it doesn't have the pads. That's bodybuilding. I, I think what happens is because I've I've done this before before I like start my set. Is I the first time I get under a lap pull down, my arms are hanging up there. It feels good to just kind of let it traction, hang. yeah, and then kind of rotate a little bit, mm. and then I'll come all the way back. But I mean, that's not part of the exercise. That's me yeah. just kind of like stretching out before I get started. And so that's I, I mean. yeah, was it uh, Saturday? I went to go work out, um, and there was a dude, the cable crossovers. So he he pulls the handles down, but it's heavy enough to where he's he can it can almost take him off the ground. Yeah. So he's really light on his feet. Yeah. And this is what he did: he hung with his arms. And then he would jump and just switch his legs every once in a while. So it's like he was an nice. astronaut. He'd go dink, oh, dink, it's like, dink. It's like weightless. Dink. Yeah, 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 and it's uh, astronaut bounds. Yeah, and I really, I really want to say something, but then, then he's not going to do it anymore. So it's like, no, let, let it happen, dude. Yeah, watch the fun. Yeah, I've seen a guy in a free motion like that where he'll get like, you know, all this like spring loaded tension, then boink, jump up, and then karate kick in the air, and then come back down. Mm. That guy was one mm. of my favorites. That's a that's a good one. I got uh, one of our listeners while I was doing a, a, a row, um, and I'm not going to call her out, but because uh, I because I know her name, but um, uh, you almost messed me up. I was doing rows, and she walked by, and you guys know this when you're doing a heavy row, a cable row, or whatever. You don't want to turn your neck. That's like you're asking for a little bit of a neck tweak, right? Yeah. yeah. So as I'm doing this, she taps on my shoulder as she's walking by to say hi. So and I kind of while you're my, in the middle of a rep. While I'm in the middle. Of a <laughs> Did you ghost her or what? No, I just kept looking. Her? I just kept looking straight ahead, and then I put it down. I looked over to see who it was. I'm like, oh okay. Oh yeah. I know who you are. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Don't do oh, that. Oh man. Me. You can make my neck. Hey, uh, did you guys hurt. see um, what Netflix is doing now with their their top ten? I think that's have you seen smart. this? Justin? I haven't seen it yet. No. So now they have in like the I think it's upper left or lower left corner of the you know the little you know graphic of whatever the the show is. Uh huh. And it says uh, it ranks the top ten in the nation. Yeah, of all of like views from on Netflix. Oh, so wow. say number one in in the nation, number five in the whatever. Huh. That's you know why that's good because sometimes the picture and the clip 
makes me not want to watch it. Oh, totally. But yeah. then if I know it's five, that was like okay. So that was like great reviews. That was like Knives Out for me. So Knives Out got like ninety five percent, like you know, positive reviews. And I'd heard good things about it. Still didn't close you. Still didn't close me. I watched the preview of it, and I think the same thing you got. I heard you just say, Sal, is that it just looked like Clue. It looks me. like the movie. I and thought, they, in fact, it and was they a already, movie. On and that. they already made a movie, Clue, before, mm -hmm. and so I was just, eh, I was just not interested to watch it. I'd rather watch something else that seemed uh, more enticing. And I just kept blowing it off, blowing it off. And then finally, the other night, uh, Katrina and I had a movie night, and we kind of there wasn't anything else that we hadn't seen or really wanted to see. And she's like, you know, let's let's just watch that Knives Out. We've been talking about possibly watching it for like the last month and a half, two months. And I'm like, all right. And we watch it. She's it been was... calling the shots a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> oh, my God. This keeps happening. Uh, I love it. <laughs> oh, God. Is that what it's happened to me, dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, it's if I just slowly happening. You just don't I just realize submitted? It. Is it just, just what Sal's it is? Sal's calling it out, though. I appreciate it. I mean, that. I didn't even have a daughter. I had a son. That was my worry of having it. Like, everyone asked me, like, why are you so adamant about having a son? Well, I said, well, I, you know, I want the Schaefer name to be carried on, first of all. And then <laughs> second is... I'm just afraid if I have a girl, I'm going to be just a pussy. Like, yeah. it's just going to soften me yeah, up. It happens to you. You and your son are, are going to be, she's going to call the shots to both you guys. Oh, man. That's all right. That's oh, all right. Anyway, man. was it a good movie yeah. or what? Yeah, it was really good. It was really, really good. All right. I've heard that from a lot of people, dude. Yeah. So well, you know, well, something that we were talking about off air that, um, you know, movies and, and now even streaming's been around a while. Like, it's, so many we have so many great analytics. I mean, Netflix is built off of analytics, right? What makes it so successful is they 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 know how to market to you and get you to binge watch. Uh, that's part of the the major success they have. And in the Hit Makers, the book goes into this, which is a really good read. Um, but it's a little annoying sometimes as a consumer or somebody who likes, I don't know, the uh, the artistic side or the novelty of like good writing or a good mm -hmm. movie mm -hmm. is they've learned and they've hacked and Hitmakers gets into this like the formula to what makes a successful movie and then everybody kind of recreates it. Like I was I was being advertised to, oh, this is a movie you would like to watch. I watched a preview and I'm like, oh my God, it's like Hangover yeah. with just four different- You've seen it a million times. Yeah, four different dudes. And it's annoying when you see that they just take advantage yeah. of knowing that you know it will do it'll produce enough to make money because enough people want to watch it because it's got a proven formula. Totally. I really appreciate a movie where I watch it and either one I was like F I had no idea that was coming or wow I don't think I've seen something like this before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, why most studios. I mean, they're only putting money into superhero films because that like translates internationally. People like can totally uh, get behind that more. So, but back to the analytics thing, I actually heard that like some of the people that are producing the content for Netflix, they don't release all those numbers for them, the producer that's actually producing it for them. So they're, they're withholding it uh, in house. Oh, Why? interesting. Yeah. I, I, I mean, obviously that's, that's oh, their own motivation I, to, to be able to then re-sign contracts. I was things. just going to say, because yeah. if you're a producer and you know, you crushed, right. And then the, your, another contract comes up, you're going to negotiate. Yeah. There's a lot of stand up uh, comedy, like, you know, where they've put out a, a special and they want to know like how far it reached and all this stuff. And they're really not, like disclosing those numbers to them. So then, you know, some of them are more motivated to then go to like a different uh, platform to, to try it out there. Interesting. Well, so that happened to me too, Adam, with uh, Lock and Key. Lock and Key is another, it's a series on Netflix that I've, I've seen it. I've gone over it a million times. I've seen the preview. It looks scary when you watch the preview. Yeah, that's what, that's looks why like we didn't it's watch a, it. Yeah, like a scary kind of series. And so Jessica doesn't like scary shit or whatever. But then it was ranked on their new ranking system. I think it was like number five or four in the world. Mm. So I said, you know what? Let's try this out. And she was like apprehensive. I don't want to watch it. Look stupid. Look scary. Whatever. I'm like, let's just try it, which makes me happy when I get to prove her wrong. Or I'm sorry, be right again. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, funny, funny thing. The day after, the, the, yeah, the morning after, she's like all reluctant. She's like, I guess you were right or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> begrudgingly, yeah. Yay! And I teased her about it. But anyway, we put it on, and um, great show. I binged like four episodes of it. Yeah, it's like a, it's a thriller. It's not scary. There's a little bit of, it's like scary for like 14 year old, 15 year old kids maybe. So it's not. 
super scary, but it's like so one of those scary for Adam, but not the rest. <laughs> yeah, <I was> <laughs> yeah, say, yeah, that's what made Katrina not want to watch it. I'm trying to find right now this uh, stand up that I watch. Justin, do you watch all the stand ups that are on Netflix? I mean, I try to. Courtney gets like irritated because that's like all I want to watch. So I usually watch it by myself, but it uh, depends. Which one are you talking about? So there's a, there's a new there's a new one. Uh, white guy tattoos. Pete, oh, the Pete Davidson. They, and he dated he dated the I think a singer who talks shit about his dick. Oh, you're talking about the dude with the tattoo on his neck back here? Yes, whatever? yes. I who, couldn't get out. I couldn't go did, past 15 minutes. Yeah. He's okay. on S- SNL. Yes, 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 yes. Did you watch it? I didn't watch it. I only watched a clip of like the. Did, yeah, you, did the you watch it, Chokey? Did you watch this? Do you know who I'm talking about? Oh, no. shoot, I thought maybe Pete you might. Samp- is it Pete? Pete something? I want you to figure it out because I thought it was what I said. It's. It- <laughs> <laughs> if you guys right. didn't listen, this pull it up, Doug, because this guy Pete was, Davidson is what I said. And go. tell me yeah. who he was dating, because I want to. And I guess she she just straight uh, blasted him, like talking about uh, that. You know, she she really was just like doing. She was uh, recovering from a uh, you know the last breakup and just kind of whatever rebound yeah rebound thank you for a can fucking loss for words there i should have drank that goddamn pure. Yeah. So, <laughs> that, yeah, that's that's the word i want putting in the wrong hole yeah <laughs> not exactly <laughs> oh that. ariana grande thank you thank you god i'm just not there right now wow so she's annoying as fuck bro she like <laughs> so annoying she talked mad shit oh, about is. this dude um and his like whole stand-up is like at least a good chunk of it is kind of a response to it, so it, it, it hooked me in there. Now I didn't know this until I'm wa- I'm watching it. Did she actually write a song called Pete Davidson? Is that what that bro, says? She blasted him in a song. She blasted him all over. Like so, oh, she was scorned. Yeah, you guys have to read up on this because it was kind of fascinating. What was she saying about him? Uh, she made it like I just told you. Like he, like she was like he. He made a big deal about them having a relationship. She played it off like it was a fling, and he was no big deal, but said he had a big dick. And like, so. Well, that's like a great. Well, yeah. Wow. Well, no. Like, was talk about that. So, the, probably yeah. the best part of, the, of the, the whole stand-up he does, he goes, you know, you think that this would be a, a, a great compliment and everything like that, but let me tell you, this is how fucking evil this woman is. Oh. <laughs> she straight ninja this that. She wanted to make sure that women for the rest of my life are disappointed. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> and I fucking died. I died. I went, oh. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You <laughs> tell, this is what you got? Tell the world you're a fucking, you got a massive oh. dick that every girl, even, even if you're like above average a little bit. If you're right. not. Oh, man. Yeah, every. <laughs> disappointed wow so i thought so i you know i don't know who the guy is um we just it was on like i think it actually just popped now did you like the whole thing because i watched 15 minutes and it wasn't it it was capture me okay so he has a different style right he that's what was at first turning me off from how he was doing it like i thought is this guy like lost for words really Mm -hmm. or is this just kind of that's his style it's Mm -hmm. his style of how he does it and so it took me a minute to warm up to his style of comedy and it was pretty it was decent it wasn't like you know over the top great or anything like that but I was more interested in the backstory because I don't know who this guy is. I don't know anything about it. And I'm listening to his jokes and I'm like with Katrina and I look over and I'm like, did that, do you think that really happened? Did he really date her? Is this a, is this part of his skit or is this real? So she's like on the, on her phone, like, like researching all of it. And she's like, Oh shit. No, he said this. And she said that. And I'm like, so that part of it made it even better. So I went, I paused it, went back, read the backstory on their relationship and all the drama and stuff and then turn it back on. I mean, so you got to kind of know his backstory a bit to get into it. Yeah, I mean, you. I, I was watching without it and enjoying it to a, a, a little bit. You know, it wasn't great again, like I said. But mm-hmm. then when I found out the backstory and thought, oh, this is clever. This yeah. is clever and really That's funny. That's interesting. Yeah. She's so annoying, dude. She's the most annoying person in the world. Her voice, phenomenal. She's got powerful, well, what powerful. What makes her so annoying? She just says constantly says stupid shit. She's like a child that says dumb shit. I remember she said something Is that about her or Taylor Swift. I thought it was Taylor Swift. No, really no, shit. she's annoying too, no. but not nearly as annoying as Ariana Grande. She's just one of the most. And the reason why I know this because I would my daughter. Did you listen to it when no, you work out? No, yeah, <laughs> you have to go to all the concerts, right? Yeah, that's it. that sucks. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I'm total. No, she she was on a show on Disney Channel. Can't remember the name of it. Uh, do you know the name? Chucky? Mouseketeers. Victorious was that it? Cat, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was a character on this Disney show that my daughter used to like. Then she became a popular singer. 
she's I think she's half Sicilian. So I was like, oh, it's just cool, you know, whatever. And I and, and so I kind of paid attention a little bit here and so there. So racist. That's and, the only reason why he listens. That's it, oh, right she's there. part Italian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Watch this. <laughs> well, you know, my daughter's into her, you yeah, know? And yeah. I'm like, is my daughter going to identify with this person? So okay. I paid attention. All right, I got you. And she just says- Paisana. She just says dumb shit all the time. They all do. Yeah. And it's their children. I They're was, young kids, you know, with a lot of power and a lot of fame. You're going to, I mean, I would have said stupid shit at that age too. Yeah, of course. You imagine? Could you imagine? Yeah. I heard you that got captured on camera. Filling your ego oh, and you're just a little shit. Oh my I, I God. heard that ever since Kanye did that thing to Taylor Swift, she's just been on this like terror of like everybody's out to get me and, and stirring up all kinds of shit too. You know, in hindsight, that was the best possible thing that could happen to her. Yeah. It blew her up. Yeah. She got so much support from that. It's not even funny. Oh, she was pretty big before that. Yeah, I mean, she was. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she was pretty massive. She's she's that. genuinely super talented. Yeah, she's the one she's, who she's really talented. She, she has. I think she still has like the, all the, music. the most famous or, or the the most amount of retweets ever in the history of retweeting. I think really. Yeah, I think because she's like notorious for never tweeting, and I think she did a tweet like a. So couple. her twats are just the best. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. wow. Sorry. Wow. 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 Is, is that past tense for doing? Gonna... <laughs> That's the, the past tense. I mean, I say twat too for <laughs> tweeting, but that was like the wrong place to My put bad. it for sure. <laughs> That's good. My bad. Some, <laughs> some win. The hey. dad jokes sometimes are good. <laughs> Save the dad jokes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes not so much a dad joke. Yeah, no, yeah. When, was... when Doug closes his eyes and shakes his head, I know I went. Yeah. I went the wrong. <laughs> I far. went too far. Yeah, when dark, uh, when I had dark to cross my legs on that one. When, when dark Doug thinks you went too far, you know people don't know, dude. That Doug, yeah. when he's when he when he pops out a joke, it's the dark dude. <laughs> Doug is the worst That's my with favorite, that. Though. He always, I tell Katrina yeah. that all the time. I said, we'll be funny because she'll be like, you know, she, every once in a while she catches some of his D Doug's humor, right? She's not around all the time. She's like, Doug's really funny. I'm like, oh no, he's definitely funny. I said, but sometimes, let me tell you, we'll be in the car and, yeah. Yeah. and Sal will say something yeah. super inappropriate yeah. that Justin will and he I will. He quadruples down. And then all of a sudden there's like a little, there'll always be like a little bit of a pause. Yes. There's yeah. always like a. Because he's, he's, he's questioning. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's a delay. And then all of a sudden Doug yeah. says something yeah. and it's like, yeah. Whoa, bro! <laughs> yeah. Whoa, yeah. that was way too far. We're gonna burn and die. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, yeah. yeah, that's so bad. Good God. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna change gears. It's good times. Uh, I uh, I was uh, on Instagram doing a post this morning, and something dawned on me. You know what pose you see all the time on Instagram, especially with girls. You see this a lot with girls. Oh, they're gonna do the the two guy the two is guys it, flexing and pointing uh, at each other. Is it no, the one where they're kind of it's up on a, a, a ledge and kind of getting their ass out? No, just you know, that's I mean, oops, one. that was way too specific. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, it's this one. It's the you know, you okay, know what I'm looking at what it was was one of my cousins started following me, so I went on his page, and then that led me to look check out some of my other cousins. And I see my cousins on these pictures, and they're you know they're all just family, or whatever. But they're like at a nightclub with their friends, so it's two girls, and they're sticking their tongues out. And I'm like, why do girls oh, always? Yeah. Why do they stick I their tongue out all the time? It's either out or it's out to the side I or something. That was like an anime thing. No, so I, I looked it up. I actually found a. <laughs> you could Google that. No, well, no. So what I Googled is. Wait, I want to know what you Googled. Actually. I Googled why do girls stick, stick their tongue out? Stick their tongues out in pictures, <laughs> yeah. and then I put psychology because I want to look up. Uh, uh, I want to look up uh, articles yeah. written that were like lollipops, psych like psych like psychology articles because oftentimes they'll comment on behaviors that we do and then they'll speculate and so I'm like who better to ask than this psychologists this somebody's a whore yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks Freud well, that's that's true yeah. so they said that it although the tongue can signify a lot of different things throughout history like poking fun or whatever they said a lot of it has to do with just it's it's either subliminal or it's overt sexuality so girls who are doing that they're they're trying to show sexuality or they're being sexual by sticking their tongues out. That's what the article said. You yeah. needed you needed an article to tell no, you. No, I just want to confirm. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's like you really needed an article. To I, I already it. thought that, so yeah. I just wanted to just back it up a little bit. Yeah, just Some kind of, science. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, one day we need to have like a you know follow Sal with his Google searches for a day. Yeah. Just nope. Be, <laughs> you know that's why I can never Dude, run for public office. Slugs have uh, four tongues. What? Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. What time is it? Did the shit kick in right now? <laughs> Also, camels minutes? have three eyelids. What? You guys know that? Bro, it's working. <laughs> What's I the just time? remember that. I was Doug, watching a uh, nature the time? documentary. 22 minutes in. Whoa, it works faster on you. You must be fasted. I'm just telling you. Low yeah, carbs. Dude, I'm, yeah, low, low carbs, carb diet. Um, protein heavy right now, and uh, it's all clicking. You still have the, the reindeer poops? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the drops or whatever? I don't want to talk about that. Dude, 
so uh, it's that's the awkward part. So are you just buzzing or something right now? Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm stimulated right now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Hit him faster. Twenty two minutes for it. you was like thirty for Sal. Forty five yeah, for, for, for you. Yeah. So wow. we all know, except for it could we- mean that I I'm just at a, a high high level. It takes a lot longer for it to build up and push over a little bit. No. When you guys, it impacts so much. No, no, no. I think like, just, oh my, <laughs> there's these more guys to- are so much. They're like here, and it's like yeah. oh, just a little. I bit don't of have some, a lot of gears. Dude. A little bit of Organifi Pure there, puts yeah. you guys over. There's just two gears. Wow, this is totally different. There's just more shit to get through for you. Like, <laughs> the pure's like, whoa, we gotta fix a lot oh of stuff. Oh my god, here. so many holes. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, anyway, yeah. dude. So my, um, so this whole coronavirus thing, right? Yeah. It's uh, there's a lot of news around Hysteria it. around it. Yeah, lots of stuff yeah. going on. And uh, aren't we trying to get somebody on the show? Yeah, I'm gonna Take try a little phone call. I'm gonna try and get someone on to talk to about it because as I'm doing my research, anytime this, something like this happens, I'm always trying to dig through. The like, what's the truth? Because here's the problem with media media is we have a market for media, just like we have a market for food or we have a market for clothes. And if I publish an article that says the coronavirus is not as bad as you thought, or if I if I publish good news, it's not going to get as many clicks or as much attention as an article that says something like coronavirus exploding and you know all over the world, but it's going to get more attention. So I'm like, I wonder if this if a lot of this is just sensationalized. Fear because that's what we keep clicking on. So I did some research, and a lot of people are saying these doctors and scientists are like, "Look, we want to definitely make sure we prevent the spread of it, but it's not. It's the flu is worse. The flu is worse for people. Infects way more people. Kills way more people. Yes. The, the there's a lot of unwanted or un you know unwarranted fears. I should say. Now my family, um, you guys think I'm a hypochondriac and I get a little paranoid, right? Definitely. Okay. I'm yeah. I'm not the first person in my family to have these traits. <laughs> Okay. okay. This right. was inherited passed down, huh? and learned. So my mom uh, is, you know, of course, she's sending us messages with articles and she's like, <laughs> are you guys buying masks? Yeah. Do you guys have, you know, so make sure you go to the store and no get- No more to- toys from China. Yeah, get toilet paper and stop shaking people's hands. I'm like, mom, like if you do the math, like I'm exposed to way more dangerous stuff every single day. It's not that big of a deal, whatever. So we're going back. Anyway, my dad went to Costco- to get his hands on uh sold out dude on masks yeah and sold out my buddy went to water so water crazy. toilet paper yeah and masks yeah gone yeah do you know where my dad what had a to, great business my dad had to drive to hollister hmm. remember we're in san jose right he had to drive to hollister to find the masks dude because they're sold out this everywhere. is the same thing with the generators you know how they've been turning the lights off and the power outages yeah. and all this stuff like dude it was impossible for me to get a generator for remember like the guy that went to jail months. or got he got a huge fine when i think he went to jail actually for it that was buying them up when that selling home, them for more yeah yeah so so they so, got they got them for like a resale license that's how they <laughs> fucked them opportunist man well they call that price gouging but in reality in the market they play, that plays a valuable role because the price reflects the 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 demand and the supply, and if the price goes through the roof because are, people are able to real something, uh, resell something for ten times more, that sends a signal to the market, and producers just produce more of it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. So if you can if you're if you can make toilet paper and sell it for five times the profit, every producer is going to try and produce more toilet paper, and you'll get better supply as a result. Uh, of doing that. It but just it, always reminds me how effective fear is. Oh. oh my God. Fear is so effective to to affect the masses. I mean, this is they know this, and so they're just looking for like a new thing. That's why I'm always like very slow uh, to to be able to buy into to like, oh my God, this is gonna be a crazy thing that we have to worry about. Dude, so my you know, I have a lot of f- uh, family and cousins that are in investments. Yeah. So my cousins who are smart investors made a bunch s- of money off of Charmin. So, dude. They are they're buying stock in like Clor- Clorox yeah. and Lysol and sure. shit like that, and their money they're making wasn't, money. Right wasn't now. Max saying too that if you get, if you did like the uh, antibiotic uh, hand lotion sanitizer or whatever, it yeah. actually leaves you more susceptible uh, to to Xeno getting estrogen. the yeah the because it opens the pores it opens the pores to xenoestrogen of oh, to xenoestrogen yeah, not not the uh, bacteria no so oh, I got it so like the rece- and I started paying attention you know the receipts you get from the store uh-huh. you ever feel how they are kind of yeah. slick and whatever. Mm-hmm. That coating is our chemical xenoestrogens that can affect uh, potentially affect the body, and so if you use the hand sanitizer and then you handle those, you're going to get like ten times more exposure to some of those chemicals. That's okay. So yeah. you you can get the xenoestrogen, but you can't get you can't get a virus. That no, well, it no. kills the bacteria. Yeah. So so they, it destroys bacteria and it breaks down the protein sheath 
uh, that's around the DNA in viruses so that they don't work. I like the so, word sheath. So then I went down another rabbit hole. I remember in science class back in, I don't remember where, I was probably a freshman, we had this debate as to whether or not viruses were alive or not. Hmm. You guys ever you guys ever looked this up? Mm-hmm. So so virus No, I've not. I know, I don't know why I'm asking you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, have you guys ever Googled freaking yeah. white virus? <laughs> you guys are like, no, we were doing cool shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, in terms Busy of like vaccines, cool how they collect dead viruses and then inject you no, with no, them? No, no, no. No. If a virus is alive or not. So bacteria yeah. is a single celled organism. It's actually alive, right? right. There's a debate as to whether or not viruses are alive or not, because really, when you look at a virus, it's a a, heated debate. Or (laughs) if when you look at a yeah, nice when you look at a virus, it's a it's a protein sheath around a DNA around DNA, but it requires a host to replicate. So viruses need to consume; they need to produce waste, but they also need to be able to reproduce. Mm. Viruses can't reproduce on their on their own. They have to be have attached. a host. A host. Yeah. So there's like a like some. So you can go yeah, but back and forth. They're feeding off of something. Wouldn't that uh, allude to them being alive? That's they, why. They that's why it's inert. That's that why it's in between. Yeah. They'll mm-hmm. say viruses are. Some people say they're alive. Some scientists. Some scientists say they're not. It's kind of this in between hmm. because they can't on their own. They don't replicate. They don't do anything. So, so they could just be there and then reactivated once they find a host. That's it. So once you get them in your body, they attach to your cells. And then they insert their DNA, and it tells your cell to do something different. It's like a program, yeah, really. Those are creepy. It's like a computer program floating around, and you pick it up, and then your body gets reprogrammed. And unless your body's immune system does something to it, uh, you're you're fuck. You wow. know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, there's the, the hysteria is a little overblown. <laughs> yeah. On it, but you should still be here. For it's us. not the black plague. No, I mean, you, you need to calm down. Well, yeah, I'd like to get I'd like to get a, a somebody who's a professional in the field, like talking to us a little bit about it, because it is. Yes. Getting, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, it's, I, it's I'm, getting I am just a political <laughs> now, like crazy. So that's what I yeah. find interesting. Have, have you guys seen that? Because it's election season. Oh yeah, how both sides are trying to use it to scare people into voting for them or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's so stupid. It's so gross. Yeah. It makes me so... Politics speaking sucks. of Speaking of the market, uh, this is as of the, the recording of this episode, so I don't, this may change when we drop this episode, but market crashed because of uh, coronavirus fears. The Fed in- it lowered interest rates, injected more money in the market, now it's up again, which I don't know if that was the best thing to How do. How much lower did they go? Really? I heard uh, someone said they lowered them, but they just lower them back down to the all-time low that they hit already, right? So they hit an all-time low... And then they started to rise back up again, and then they just brought it right back down. Doesn't that so. just inflate everything again? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Why, just in, why do that? Um, because, well, it's buying time in a sense. You know, yeah. that's kind of what they're doing. Slow is, bleed. Yeah. It, well, it's inevitable that eventually what will happen is like, and I think we're a market correction. Yeah, we're close to that, man. When I when you look at the housing right now, it's just bro. It's been a bull market for ten years. Yeah, it's, it's like been, one of the longest bull markets uh, ever. <clears throat> so, and and the cutting the cutting interest rate. Here's the thing. There's a lot of motivation to keep the stock market looking good because we're in election season. Mm -hmm. So when you're the president, you have strong influence over the Fed's policy, even though the Fed is supposed to be uh, independent. Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of influence. So if you're the president, you don't want stock market to go down that long right before you get elected because that could be used against you. So of course, they're going to do something like that. I don't think they would have done that Otherwise, because it just it, it, when the market correction comes, the more you skew the market, the the stronger the connections. Get, uh, excuse me, the correction can be, um, and that could be pretty you know pretty bad or whatever. Yeah. I Dude, it was funny this weekend. Uh, I thought of you guys because I was actually in a position where okay, there's strengths that you and your partner have that are different, you know. And, and uh, we were actually trying to do some good things for the community, for the schools, all this kind of stuff. So Courtney actually like signed up uh, to collect collect um, these different uh, like certificates, offers, and things like that from local businesses for this auction uh, for charity for the school. Oh, I see. Yeah, and so like she signs up for that. They send her an email basically like oh yeah and also like here's a list of like 50 businesses that we need you to cold call and get like them to uh, basically you know provide something for this this auction and we need you to do that by you know in a week or whatever and so she's like freaking out and like has i'm like 
whatever, I'll do it. You know, I'll do it. And like, it, it was just hilarious because I just remember being at 24 hour fitness and like going to just like cold calling back when I get rejected, they go back, you know, hammer the same people over and over again. So I, the, the whole weekend, all weekend, I'm like on the phone, I almost like had a Bluetooth in my, my ear and I'm just like calling these people. My motivation behind it though is the funny part, right? So each, each one that I close, she's like, okay, you can bank uh, a, a, a sexual favor. <laughs> she doesn't. I was, like, I was like, "Wow, you really want to get this done, don't you?" <laughs> she doesn't know what she just did. I know, I know. So I was on the phone like all weekend, just hammering these businesses. You know, yeah. hey, was, one of them actually. Did you to, tell them? Hey, listen, yeah, yeah, yeah you please you, do this. Listen, yeah. A lot is riding on this. Yeah, you know? it. like, like it definitely. So it was funny because I'm representing the elementary school. You know, so I have to keep that in mind. I can't just be myself uh, because I was like, it was funny because like some of the, the businesses, like the nail shops and like people, like their immediate like answer is like, no, no, like, like really aggressively, like, no, I don't want to. I'm like, oh, so you don't want to support the community. I got it. You know, and I had to like catch myself. I was like, oh, I can't even be like <laughs> shitty and sarcastic, you know, because I'm like the elementary school. Yeah. You know? So I was, I was like, I had to catch myself a bunch. So what it's a, uh, is it like one of those little coupon books that you end up the kids go sell? Is that what it is? Where you, no, you get all the, all the shops and they get, all give 20% off, buy this, get one Yeah, free. similar. Um, you, you could do that, but we're trying to get like unique things. So I got like, I, mean, I, I was like closing it shitty. I'm, I'm totally out of it. I was like 20%, you know, you know, uh, close it rate, Ooh, which is, yeah, yeah it's not, it's not my average. best, dude. Yeah. It's not my best. You for you? Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, sure. How'd you guys say? <laughs> I think it's a sign of the times. I'll put some, some excuses out there. But uh, like some of the hotels, I got like free night stays and I got like really good oh, like, wow. stuff, like, like like two person like romantic dinners for this like really expensive dinners at some of these places. And so I got like really cool prize, not just like, you know, $20 gift certificate for nail, you know, done. So, I, I didn't close any. So deals. explain this. Is, is this like a, a now they're going to get auctioned off or yes. something? Oh, okay. So that's yeah. how this works. Well, that's, yeah. that's perfect. Now, how are you leading this? Are you leading the conversation with, hey, do you want to donate for charity for school? I'm. I'm I'm assumption closing them that basically they've already donated before and that, you know, we're running this <laughs> again. Lied? Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. And then you would just you like send like, Hey, do you want me to come down in person? I'll go ahead and, you know, like, and then I would, a lot of times I would just make up the prize for them. So it was just like, oh my God, what you know, you so like maybe like the free last time was like a free night stay, you know, like for, uh, you know, one of your King suites, like, can we do something similar to that this time? And, uh, and I got them to do it. So well, yeah. Would you like to repeat what you guys did the last five years or just uh, <laughs> going for the last uh, I don't have anything yeah. here. Yeah. They're like, who are you again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I would lead with the whole like, hey, uh, would you guys like to promote your services to all the parents at our school? We're doing free promotions. I, I sure. tried that angle. Did it work? Yeah. Th th that was the ones where I got the hard no. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. Assholes. Mm. I would have thought that would have worked. Yeah. Well, Sal's, Sal's, Sal's getting rusty Sal's too. getting rusty. Yeah. I don't know. You should try it. Yeah. Yeah. Give it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Give me some numbers. I'll, I'll give you the, the, the last sheet. Do you get the sexual favors too? I got two sheets done. I got one more to go. I'll see what you So hold on. So you have you're closing at 20%. How many yes. is that? How many of those have you closed then? What's the number? Well, so if I'm like uh, 10 total. So <sighs> yeah, I know. Bro, that's a lot of sexy stuff. It's it's a lot of things I'm going to figure have out. Have you already started? Yeah, thinking about how you're going to yeah, ca calendar that out. Yeah, I have to make it all different too. And so I'm going to, yeah, I'll put it on the calendar. So now there's, are you, are not, are they all individual sexual favors or you, can you combine them for I know, one big? That's a great question, Sal. Like one night of just pure debauchery. You know? Yeah. Like just like anything goes sort of an arena. Yeah, yeah, you better, yeah. You better negotiate that before you get any further into this because that's going to be not fair. I know, She's right? Like, oh yeah, one night. We just have two yeah. hours sex and she gets out it's all like, the moves. Like I want wrestling. I want like, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep it in my head. He's doing Honestly. moves. Yeah. That's why you got to yeah. watch this on video. You see Justin's <laughs> moves that he's doing. Hey, how this, this is what I lube, picture. you know what I mean? This, like, this is crazy. <laughs> this is what I picture on Justin's calendar. Yeah. You know, day one, wheelbarrow. Uh, day wheel two, <laughs> yes, jackhammer. Like the names he uses <laughs> first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm getting a stability ball in there. I haven't done that in a while. Yeah. All right. Our first question is from Dylan Peed 95 are SARMs a useful tool or a gimmick? That's you. Uh, did you pick this, Al? Yeah. You. Uh, I, I know. I sent it you. It was over, Dylan who peed. Well, I sent him over a. Uh, it, first of all, define or tell me the difference between a SARM and a peptide. Are they? What's so, the difference? So peptides uh, are are uh, compounds that can cause other actions in the body or can be turned into other things in the body. So this is supposedly. A SARM is a drug, so SARM stands for Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator. So what that means is that these compounds are designed 
to attach to the androgen receptors in the body and to cause some actions. Now, what are the androgen receptors in your body responsible for? Well, they're responsible for the masculinization of your body. So facial hair, deepening of your voice, uh, oily skin, you know, that kind of stuff. But they're also responsible for muscle building uh, to some respect. So testosterone attaches to the androgen receptor. All steroids attach to the androgen receptor. So SARMs were invented to attach to the androgen receptor, but to, to cause those receptors to exert the muscle building effects without exerting the masculinizing effects. Because that's like the magic, that's the magic formula, right? In pharmaceuticals is can we make a drug that gives you all the wonderful benefits of testosterone minus the masculinizing effects? That way women can use them. That way we can give them to people who need to strengthen their bones and their muscles because those masculinizing effects, as much mm. as, as bodybuilders and you know roid heads like them because you know you start to feel aggressive and all that stuff, when you're, when you're giving this to the average person, they don't necessarily want to feel that, especially women or if you have to give them to kids or, or whatever. So that's the goal behind these drugs. They're totally new. These, these drugs have one or two, you know, you know, they're not, none of them are FDA approved. Um, the, the most, the one that's been most tested, I'm not quite sure what phase of, of trial it's in, but it still hasn't been approved. Many of them have been dropped by the FDA because of, of negative effects. Um, and here's what the anecdotes are saying. So I've, I, I've, I've been really deep in SARMs for a long time. I have no interest in using them because these are research chemicals. They're not FDA approved. A lot of people haven't used them yet for us to really know what they're doing. Now, does the the peptide? I know this is a SARMs question, but I'm personally curious because I get a lot of questions around the peptides. Yes, mm -hmm. and they even though you just define them, they still sound very similar to me. They I are mean, research both, chemicals. Yeah, research chemical. They both are supposed to have an effect that hopefully produces more testosterone or growth hormone right. or whatever. So even though one sounds like it's specific to Anderson receptors, I feel like that they're both kind of similar, no? Yeah, so like uh, the peptides, uh, like for example, some peptides you'll you'll use, supposedly what they'll do is they'll have your body release way more growth hormone or insulin-like growth factor, IGF-1, which are both anabolic hormones and, and all that stuff. But again, the problem is, first off, how are they legal? Right? You think to yourself, well, these things are not FDA approved. How the hell are people getting their hands on them? There's a gray area in in regulation when it comes to pro to, to these compounds. You can legally sell them as research chemicals. What you can't do is sell them for human consumption. So the way they're getting around it is you go online and you're buying a research chemical and it'll say clearly not for human consumption, although that's what people are doing. But people are literally experimenting on themselves with these products. That's what's that, that's what you're doing. Yeah, how do they go around that? Like uh, I mean, are they pretending that, you know, they're they're running some kind of like lab somewhere or is this just like well, whatever? I, I mean, it's interesting to me that cuz I we've been uh, anti-SARMs for since the beginning. Uh but, you know, where else are you going to get something like this where we can we can go test? Like so let's just say somebody uh, buys the latest and greatest SARM <clears throat> and we've now got these forums where all these people are talking and sharing what they're feeling, what they're noticing. I mean, maybe one of the best ways to test this with that big of masses coming together. And I think the ones that get popular are the ones that have the most amount of people that have used them and said positive things in comparison to negative things. The, the, Isn't that how they get, get to where everyone starts talking about them? So the, the most popular ones are popular because uh, they're, they're the ones that people say give you the most gains. People literally don't give a shit about side, side effects. effects. They don't. Yeah. Think about steroids. I think can't about, see color anymore, but it's cool. Yeah, think about any drug. You know what I mean? When you think, okay, think, first off, think of the population that's attracted to SARMs. It's not general. General population doesn't give a shit. Most people don't know what it is. The only people who are interested in it are either biohackers mm -hmm. or like you know people who want to find a steroid but don't want to go to the black market. Oh, I can buy this online type of deal. They're not. In the, they're not in a mental state to give a shit about side effects. In fact, if they gain muscle. They're really happy and they really don't care. So. Yeah, my case was always that I, I, 
I, if I'm going to take that, I may as well just take testosterone. That's well, how I felt. Testosterone's and, way more effective. Yeah, it's, and we it's, know what it does. Right. So that that yeah. I what I don't understand is is doing that instead of like they're not they definitely aren't proven to be safer. So why would mm. people go there? They, it's the legal side of it, I'm sure. Yeah, come on. No, know, nobody's, I, no one's people going, still think like that. I, though. It is crazy. People think that. First of all, you can order steroids online probably just as easily <laughs> as you can order SARMs. <laughs> Secondly, I don't know. I've never met a single person that's had their door bust it down for for having their personal use of steroids taken right it doesn't happen I mean, unless you're trying to distribute well, you see it and make the, a business out of it no one's fucking with you for yeah. a 10 10 cc vial of fucking like you see it with the like the crossfit sports all those people come like bringing them down for using uh these sarms because I, they must have thought they're not testing for them yet because yes. they're so new they think if they use a sarm they're not testing for it so i can use this now Anecdotally, um, when you read the message boards and you, you talk to people, and I talk to people who I, I believe to be reputable, the effects from a SARM are they're not like steroids. It's not not even close. And SARMs also promise, uh, or or one of the targets, uh, I think target uh, actions of a SARM is also to not affect your natural hormone levels. So the problem with taking testosterone is if you take testosterone, your body stops making testosterone. So they're trying to create these drugs that have less side effects, give you the muscle building effects, but also they don't shut down testosterone. Mm. The problem is SARMs do shut down testosterone, at least at the doses that people are using. Because the studies, the doses that they're using in the studies are far lower than these kamikaze doses that people online are using. We just don't know what they do. Here's the other thing. People are buying them because they're afraid of the black market and they're afraid that, oh my God, I don't know what's in this black market, you know, vial of testosterone. I hate to break this to you. You don't know what's in the, that that bottle of SARMs either. Right. None of these are regulated. They're not a big enough market for people to... Nobody knows how to test them properly. And the very few independent lab tests that I have seen have come out all over the place where, you know, doses are off, dosages are off, excuse me, where uh, the, there's un, chemicals that they can't identify that are in them. I've read scary stories of people getting their eyesight uh, permanently affected. There was one SARM that caused people to have like an orange tint uh, yeah, or damaged night that. vision. Yeah. Like, like it's crazy. I, I no, I don't think if I mean, look, you want to experiment on your body, it's your body. But keep in mind, you are this is a very high risk uh, kind of game that you're playing. We don't know what they do. None of them have been approved. And the place you're getting them from, is, who knows what they're putting in your bottle. And on top of that, you're, a lot of people are, are even inject Like peptides tend to be injected. SARMs at least are oral. But wow, you really need to be careful right. when you inject a random something into your body. I mean, it just takes the wrong thing to cause uh, you know, a bad reaction. Next question is from Knickknack97. What exercises would you recommend for improving your vertical jump? You know, I just did a post on my story the other day. Uh, and I, you, just, you think because I think I, I've talked about them so many times that everybody's heard and, and is over there following them. But if you're asking any questions related to uh, sports performance, especially vertical jump area, you have to be following uh, PJ Performance, Max yeah. Marzo, and Corey Schlesinger. Edge you. They just started that whole online yeah. educational uh, website. And they're they're the best, dude. They really are the best. In my opinion, they are some of the best uh, s sports performance brains uh, in the industry and incredible, also very, very incredible men, too. I, I like them as people. I think they have a, a great business, and they have incredible free content. So if you're not following them, you should be doing that. And the reason why, I, you know, because it's not like one of us can't answer how to improve vertical jump. Sure, I have an answer and exercises that can help improve vertical jump. But man, they, these guys are on a whole other level that this is where I go to research and read more information. And one of the things that I think was paradigm shattering for me uh, following PJ over the last, I mean, I've been following him for a good four or five years now, uh, is how important, forget the exercises, how important yeah. the uh, technique Right. Of, of jumping is and what a difference that can make. I've seen this guy give somebody six to eight inches on their vertical within minutes by just mm -hmm. showing them the how, approach the approach to it and the mechanics of it to get them to add. I mean, I mean, I remember being a kid in the gym and training so hard and wearing those stupid shoes and doing all these things to try and increase my vertical by one inch or two inches where, you know, this guy could really look at the, your mechanics of your, your jumping technique 
and improve, you know, four or five times mm-hmm. that. So mm-hmm. uh, the value of, of following these guys and, 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 and listening to what they have to say about vertical jump and just sports performance in general – uh, definitely where I get a lot of my yeah, information. And obviously you have to have strong legs. And so like some of those things of general overall strength, you know, will apply to every athlete. Uh, but then also having the mobility and the stretch reflex that, you know, will provide that kind of response. And there's lots of subcategories of this. So it's not like, you know, this exercise is going to get you like a two inch vertical, you know, like there's a lot more to it. Like Adam's saying, in terms of the technique, my mind's been blown with what kind of content they're putting out. So we always shuttle them. That well, way. I'm going to, I'm going to give an analogy. Okay. If you had, you could have two groups of people um, trying to improve their punching power and one group does shoulder and tricep and chest exercises and just gets stronger. And the other group practices punching, practices punching technique and gets coached by a boxer. At the end of 10 weeks, 100%, I will guarantee you that those that practiced punching are going to punch much harder. And if you don't believe me, have a bodybuilder punch you in the arm and then have a boxer punch you in the arm. The bodybuilder is way more muscled and stronger, yeah. but the boxer is going to hit you much harder because – Punching is a skill and a technique, just like jumping is. Nothing is going to improve your vertical jump like practicing jumping. So the number one thing you should do to get a better jump is practice your technique and the skill of jumping. And then the second thing is to practice how you explode out of a jump. That's what the Mm -hmm. exercise I would focus on is how do I generate force in the shortest period of time? This is where plyometrics can become extremely valuable is practicing being able to exert all that force in a short period of time to give me the most jump. And plyometrics have to be applied properly. The way you you utilize plyometrics is by exploding into a jump, resting for a while, because once fatigue sets in, you lose the value of of plyos. Once, once you're fully rested, practice again. That's the single best thing you can do. Now, aside from that, general strength in the lower body in the calves, and in the core uh, will contribute to all of that. But nothing is going to get you better than practicing, just practicing jumping. Well, I'm, I'm going to circle back to what Justin said because this impacted me personally more than anything else, and that was just getting stronger in like my squat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, a basketball. I played basketball as a kid uh, growing up. I, I stopped playing. I didn't. I stopped playing for a team and like really serious as I got into my 20s. I always did like rec ball and things like that. But I was not uh, playing as consistently as I was was as a young kid. Uh, started to get into you know bodybuilding, not like competitive bodybuilding, but building my physique and caring about how I looked. I started, and I've shared on this podcast before. One of the things that you know, put the most size on my body was starting to eliminate basketball. So I stopped playing basketball, uh, burning all those calories. Started to pack on some size. I got the biggest I'd ever been by not playing ball for a few years, and uh, developed my legs from squatting. And then I'll never forget coming back and playing basketball after like a two-year hiatus and being able to throw the ball down better than I'd ever had in my life. Up until that point, like it was like, you know, man, at the peak of my basketball training, I could barely get up and get a dunk. Uh, And then I got to a place where I could drop step, two-hand, throw it down, uh, and I hadn't been playing any basketball. So there is something to be said about... You know, I wasn't practicing jumping. I wasn't even doing any real plyometric work like that. I just built some legs on me that I didn't have as a kid at all. And my fucking vert, I, I, I don't know what the exact amount of inches, but I had to put on at least five to six inches more the way I was being able to throw the ball down. So uh, make sure that you're squatting. I mean, squatting will definitely uh, carry over into your vertical jump for sure. You know, probably more yeah, so and it's else. a little controversial because uh, the, the the skill the, of you know cleaning is is definitely very high. And we talked about this with Sonny on the podcast recently. But the triple extension concept of you know really being more explosive, really like pouring more force output into the ground is really a huge part of that uh, development of being able to increase your vertical jump. And, you know, it doesn't mean you need to learn the skill of with a barbell of learning a a clean, but emulating that process, whether it's with a kettlebell or with a trap bar Mm. or something like that, where we could then mock, um, you you know, that type of explosive triple extension is, 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 is a huge component, but, you know, working on the strength, and then, you know, building your way up to the peak of that, which is the powerful expression of it. Yeah, the the uh, full squats, 
to build general strength and then uh, partial squats to ju- to build specific strength for the, for the it, jump. That is where it applies here. No junk. You no know, joke. So if you're uh, junk in the trunk. Yeah, I don't know why I said that. Yeah. If you're if you're pretty experienced with your lifting and you want to improve your 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 vertical and you want to add more strength, you can actually add partial squats. This is where partial or half squats actually have some value. I don't. Well, I don't ever recommend that except for this. Well, particular. that's. I mean, remember when that uh, video of LeBron James went viral of yeah. the way he was squatting, and people ah, there was all this debate back and forth. He's an advanced athlete. That's yeah. very specific. Well, and, and not only that, and he's huge. It, you'll never, <laughs> you'll true. never see a basketball player take off for a dunk from the deep astagrass squat position mm-hmm. or even anywhere close to that. You so won't weird. even see them take off from a, a 90 position to do that. They they probably have a three-quarter bend uh, in their squat when they go up for a jump. So why, if you're an NBA player getting paid millions of dollars and you care more about that than longevity and what will build the most muscle on my quads, you're looking for the most carryover into your vertical jump. It does make sense here to train these quarter type squats that people make fun of people on uh, on Instagram for doing because it has value here. Yep. Strong core for coiling. Then you got strong legs for that like explosive output. You got strong feet and you got stable ankles. Like all those things, like you know, very much concentrate on. You know, there's an there's an African tribe that uh, the men jump, and this is how they show their virility and fertility and attract women. Do you guys know that? No. Yeah, the, all, all the men will jump together. And the height and the explosiveness of the jump is how they'll attract women. And so the women in the, in the tribe will... And they're also looking at their jump. I was just going to say, I wonder if it really has something no, to do with their gonna, vertical don't, or don't. What's, what's flopping around. That's a really no, no, good no, no, way that, for them no, to tell. They have, I mean, they wear those little... Come on, man. It's got to They wear those little banana leaf underwear, no, bro. They I mean, don't. you can tell a lot what's going on. Not on. every every African this tribe... This is a reproductive kind of dance. No, yeah, they don't yeah, all wear yeah, the same shit. Like, you guys are so funny. She's like, oh, look, that's an eight-inch vertical. No, Doug can bring it up. That's definitely a 10-inch. No, they actually wear... four footer right No, dude, they actually wear almost like long skirts so you ain't gonna see nothing bro they're well, just looking they at their up, it flies up <laughs> no, 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 no. i need to explain that it to does you. It. Yeah. next question is from yois sotello do resistance training and nutrition play a factor for women who want to conceive totally and the rest there, of the question is my bad. Yes. would a woman have to switch up her diet and training regimen to better her chances of conceiving? Yeah, no, yes, no. it makes a big difference. Katrina did all this stuff. So one yeah. of the okay, so so first off, at being healthy, generally healthy, overall healthy, body fat percentage isn't too low, okay? Because being too low can actually negatively affect your ability to conceive and also being too, too high. So you want to have a healthy range of body fat. And for women, this can be, this is typically uh, for conception around between 20 to 25%, not even leaner than 20%. Uh, I've known women who've been in the 17% body fat range, had to get their body fat up to 20 uh, before they can conceive. So in that range, general overall good health that's the best most uh, the, the biggest impact you're going to have on your ability to conceive now that being said specifically if we were to break down okay general health everything looks good what's the form of exercise that's going to contribute the most to a woman's ability to conceive resistance training always and the reason why is resistance training is anabolic it's pro tissue it's pro hormone balance it encourages a faster metabolism which allows you to eat more when your metabolism is becoming really, really, really thrifty, you can run the risk of sending a signal to your body that says, hey, uh, we're not getting much food, so probably having a baby is not a good idea. But when you're lifting weights, like we talk about all the time, you're able to eat more, and because you're able to eat more and still maintain a healthy body fat percentage, sends a wonderful signal to the body. Now, any form of exercise that's overdone is going to damage or or negatively affect your ability to conceive. So what I mean by that is even if you lift weights, but you just lift weights a lot and you're training like a maniac and you're pushing your body to the limit and you're always on the borderline of overtraining, probably not a good environment for conception. You want to be generally in a good kind of relaxed state. It's funny. I don't know if you guys have had friends, this happened to friends, but I've got several family members where they were trying you know, to conceive and then they, because they were trying, they were stressed out about it. It's not working. It's not working. Then they mm-hmm. gave up mm-hmm. and they just relaxed. Boom. 
oh, yeah. happens right away. Now, what, that whole stress what, all the now, time. Now, what are your thoughts? On, so let's say somebody just heard th- that statement you made about where percentage there you should be at, or ideal, right? Nothing is going to make the greatest impact than being having your body in a healthy state. And let's say somebody is listening to that and they want to get pregnant and they're like at 30, 32%, which is not crazy, but they're at 32% body fat. And so they hear that. And so they assume that if that's the best thing to do, they start dieting to get down to 2025 while they're also trying to consume. And while they're dieting like that, they may be running low calorie, low, low, low fat intake. What's your thoughts on that? Because that's got to be essential too, is to make sure that you are hitting your you know, essential amount of fat and protein for the day. I mean, I would think that makes a greater impact than actually getting that person's body fat percentage. Well, it down. depends why their body fat was in the 30s to begin with. You know what I'm saying? If they're if they just become healthier and then the body fat percentage starts to drop, then they're probably going to improve their their chances of conceiving. Typically, if you take a woman from 33 or 34 percent and you do it the right way, down to 27, 26 percent. Generally speaking, her health is going to uh, it's going to improve. But here's the thing: really, forget the body fat percentage stuff. I, I, as I was saying it, I know I was thinking to myself, like I probably shouldn't communicate this because people are going to take this the wrong way. Really, it's stay away from the extremes, right? Mm-hmm. Too too shredded and really really high. That's when you'll have some negative effects. The middle, which is going to be a big range, you're probably going to be okay. But if you like shredded, I've I've done this now. Um, let me think. I've had about five clients I can think of off the top of my head that were hardcore fitness fanatic female clients trying to conceive. And one of the factors that made them successful was taking their body fat from 12%, which is shredded for a girl, and gaining it up to 18 or 20%. And I mean, they were trying at the super shredded body fat for a long time. And finally, it was like, look, we got to get your body fat percentage up. You need to eat more food. You got to send a signal to your body that... Mm. This is okay to get pregnant, and sure enough, as they gain body fat, uh, they were able to to get pregnant. Little Barry White uh, doesn't hurt either. <laughs> Def- well, you know the mental all. state. Mental state makes a big difference. Like if you're if you're stressed out uh, a lot, if if even trying to conceive is stressing you out, that remember your body doesn't want to put you in aren't a there position. Certain, aren't there certain foods and nutrients though too to have a for ovulation and stuff like that? I believe I remember Katrina reading uh, and she was eating certain foods that like she this is supposed to help with her ovulating. Like so aren't there things like that that they can be doing? You wanna you wanna you don't want to be any nutri- you don't want to have any nutrient deficiencies. So right. you want to be able to consume uh, meats. Um, you wanna have egg yolks are very, very good. Uh, a lot of the col- the choline that's present 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 in yolk, the cholesterol that's present in yolk, uh, fish, fish is also very important. That's also important throughout the whole pregnancy. Mm. Um, you you basically don't want to be deficient in anything. Oh, um, shellfish have nutrients that are vital to producing uh, or to have a healthy you know healthy consumption. Um, here's the other thing too. You don't want to like all of a sudden uh, try and hit new PRs and achieve new athletic performance during this period. You don't want to you know, challenge your body too hard with exercise while you're trying to conceive. You want to, that's what you do before. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, okay, we're going to try and have a baby simultaneously. I'm going to try and hit a mm. new PR and a deadlift. And I want to be able to run the mm. mile faster than you I know, did before. I remember when we were talking with Drew Canoli about it, uh, basically Organifi producing more seminal volume. Which one, what uh, did he say that? No, remember there was a we did a commercial. It was the like green that. juice, I believe. Oh. Drinking more green juice produces a higher seminal volume. Well, I don't know. I haven't tested that yet. You it's don't remember? A, you were the one that put. Said yeah, that. you're the one that said that on the podcast, you, you, and then you, you was dro- like, "Oh, I knew about that." You dropped some study that had something to do with something that was in Organifi green Ashwagandha? juice. Ashwagandha. It might be. It I don't. I don't remember what it was, but it, it showed that it, you produce higher volume of semen when you when you take this. And I remember that we talked about it. That was one of the big jokes when we first signed with Organifi yes. that we did this commercial around. I'm just around. I'm just trying to help you guys out. Yeah. Well, there are supplements that the man. But that's as to say that's for the guy though, right? Yeah, yeah for the guy is what I'm talking about. Yeah, there are certain supplements for the woman to <laughs> you take. Make, make but- your husband drink the green juice. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! You eat yeah. shellfish, I'll drink green juice. I, there are supplements that women can take to help, but I won't recommend any because I don't want to recommend any unless a woman works with a, a doctor or functional medicine practitioner because some of the pro-fertility uh, herbs that women can take can also reduce fertility if it's the if it's the wrong woman if she's taking it and, and it's not for her but for a man a man can take uh horny goat weed 
Tribulus Terrestris. Uh, he could supplement with zinc. And then ashwagandha. All of those have been shown to improve sperm motility, sperm number, sperm health. Um, those are all supplements I took when I was trying for my first two kids. And you know it only took us a couple months or whatever. Um, and they tend to help. But yeah, for, for women, generally you want to be healthy and you don't want to go low in anything. You're not trying to go no carb. Um, and you're not trying to go low fat. You want to kind of have everything because you want your body to think things are ample. We have uh, lots of resources. I'm not under a lot of stress. That's the state you want to be in. And a good person to follow, Dr. Gabriel Lyon was who was uh, in communication with Katrina the whole time during us trying to get pregnant and then her pregnancy. So she's been a great resource for us. So uh, if you're not following her on Instagram, you should follow her and look her up too. Next question is from A-Rod Goes Ham. What has fatherhood taught you? Just had my first son. What advice would you give to a first-time parent? Mm. Adam, you're the oh, newest that's dad. That's a loaded question. Yeah, I mean, since you're the newest dad, I, I, I always love asking you uh, questions like this because it's like I forgot so what new, it was like. so yeah. fresh. Yeah, no, there's, God, there's been, uh, there's a lot, right? Um, I definitely have uh, a, a, an unbelievable amount of patience, uh, empathy, and love that I, I'm not used to. Uh, I think that those have been some of the, the, the biggest differences uh, that I've noticed in, in fatherhood. Um, I, my, the way I view a lot of things, I've, I've never been so unselfish in my life. Like, uh, just the, the way I am with money. I mean, Sal actually said something and he called it. It's weird too. It's really funny. And, and normally when Sal says something too, I make a point to try and counter that and make sure he's wrong. I know. It's so annoying. It is. I try really hard sometimes. And, <laughs> it, you know, and I, I was like, I do not like politics. I find myself following politics weird. Right. Way more. The world it's, becomes bigger. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, it's cut into my sports time. Yeah. I'm, I'm very nervous about it. Cause now uh, you care what's going to happen. I right? do. Right. So yeah. there's, there's things like that, uh, that I didn't think that would happen. And, and that's happened. Uh, what else? You know, there's this, someone asked me on my questions, uh, what am I most scared about? And I think the thing that I, I'm, I'm most nervous about as a father is I know that it's inevitable that I'm going to come up short somewhere and not knowing where that somewhere is, is what scares me. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Like every, if you talk to any experienced father, um, they'll always tell you to do the best you can. You'll, it'll never be perfect. There'll always be something that he's mad at you about or resent you for, or that he didn't, he doesn't, they think that he would have done differently. And so I know that's inevitable, um, no matter how great of a father I'm trying to be or think I am. And so the fear is, what is that going to be? Well, the double edge to that, too, and I was talking with my dad, actually, about this, because it was like, for me, I felt like he did a great job raising me, but there was this moment where also he felt that he underestimated me. And he like we had a conversation about this, but I'm like, that's what drove me. You know, that actually, like, is something that was a good thing for me. I'm glad that, you know, it it was out there to where I, I had to work, you know, that much harder to kind of prove myself. I have this like sort of chip, but it's like, he didn't intentionally do that. It was just like, I, I assumed it was going to be, it was going to go in this direction. And then you totally throw me, threw me off by, you know, like taking all of your initiatives uh, elsewhere. So you just don't know. I mean, I think a lot of it for me, the fear is the unknown. It's just, I don't know exactly like it, you think you can predict things and then it just completely goes in a different direction. And, and you're like, okay, I have to be adaptable. I have to be flexible. I have to, you know, help where I can. Mm. I, I also have, and this is going to... This is probably going to piss off a lot of people, um, especially any of our feminists that listen to the show. Mm, you just pissed them off. Um, <laughs> just well, you know, I, I mean, I've I've always been very pro. Like, I mean, I'm attracted to a woman that is incredibly independent. She said to me like the first time we ever really started a date was, "I I don't uh, I don't need you. I want you." Um, she's self-made. Uh, she was she was raised to to never need or depend on a man, and I'm attracted to that. So I'm I'm very much so, uh, you know. I, I don't say I'm a, a, a pro feminist person, but I I would think that that the messaging I think around that for the most part, I've been pro for a very long time, and I think that it, it has been needed for for a century now. To the pendulum, it was swung so far one direction that it's it's had needed to come back the other. But now I have this new 
uh, look on a lot of the messaging around that that actually really bothers me, that I'd never bothered me before until becoming a father. And that's because I recognize now the, the magnitude and the importance of being a good parent and, and, and the role that women have played in our society for so long. Um, like it's, it like gets me emotional just thinking about like the, the, how important the mom plays a role in, in the child and that we are encouraging and, and almost pushing women out into the workforce so hard, almost as if it's like an inequality thing. And I don't think that at all. Like now I have this like humbling attitude of like, holy shit, like I think I'm this big boss, man. I make all this money. I make sure that we can eat and I put this roof over our head. Fuck, none of that matters if it wasn't for her and what she's able to do for my son and take care of our household, like the, the, the importance of that and the value of that. I think we, we just, uh, I think we just have not, I don't think a lot of people put it aside. I don't think you think about it until you get put in that position. And Mm. so, you know, sometimes uh, I think that we have this younger generation that's coming up and they're pushing that message so hard uh, to empower woman and hear me roar. And like I said, for the most part, I've been very pro all of that. But now I, I'm starting to rethink my my stance with that and what it's doing, because then it's it's teaching a lot of women that that it, you shouldn't be just as proud about being being home. Like now more than anything else, I look at Katrina and this was very hard for our relationship because I I wanted her to stay home, but I knew I couldn't say that. I knew I couldn't tell her like, don't continue to pursue your dreams and your career. So absolutely would I never do that. But deep down inside, I was like, man, I hope she wants to do that. And luckily for me, she's in a position where she can do that now and, and she still works. And, 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 but she's now able to stay home all day uh, with, our, with our son. And I just, it, there's so many things that happen, interactions that happen with your son, uh, with, with uh, other people potentially in the day that I think, man, there's no other person in the world that I would rather uh, be teaching this young this young infant right now than me or her on on uh, his morals, his thoughts, his engagement, and you know we're we're pushing that agenda so hard uh, about uh, women in the workforce and equality and and all those things that I think are important but almost to a fault now. And that's, and it never bothered me before. And sometimes now I see some of the messaging that's out there related to that. And that's something that's taught me uh, that I've been taught in this whole fatherhood and being in this position and realizing how fucking important it is, uh, parenting is and how hard it is and how much work it takes to raise a, a good, a good child. It's, it's 24 seven nonstop all the time. And if we're if we're pushing the men to go out and work hard, the women to go out and work hard, and everything like that, we're forgetting about the the generation that's an up and coming and the roles that and what you're going to what what how that's going to form and shape them. Like ages, you know, three to seven years old are the most formidable times of a, a human's life, and you are laying the foundation for that. Is and if you're so concerned about being an equal person financially as your partner that you're putting that as a as a second to me that's the wrong fucking message man i i just think the the when you're when you push one message hard it, it simultaneously maybe on accident will demonize the other side so i think it's going to start to balance out so i can see what you're saying what do you're you get what about. I mean, though? Oh I mean, yeah, I, I do. I totally do. I never, I never. Actually, looked at a lot it. of women say that. A lot of women. Yeah. Uh, you have camps where you know, uh, you know, I'm at home. I stay at home. I work, and then they'll demonize each other. You should be at home with the kid. Oh, no, you yeah. should be. Oh, Courtney experienced that when she left. You know, her job. It was it was hard for her because of you know coming back and them all sort of like not intentionally but giving snide comments about like you know, just her not working anymore. Oh, like, she's she, like she doesn't have a purpose anymore. And I'm just like, that's so gross. Like, like, I don't know that, that really got to me too. So she I has can, the greatest purpose what, ever now. Yeah. And I could totally see it from your angle that you're talking about. And I know it's hard you know, to talk about that because of, you know, where we're at in society, but it is, it's a, it's a very, very important role. And I'm so happy that, you know, she's there to do that. Yeah. Well, you know me, I don't give a fuck about what everybody thinks. I know for uh, yeah. sure. I, I know for sure. I pissed off half of our listeners by making, I don't a, think so. I, think I don't think good case by making a I, statement no. like that but i i mean it's the truth we're still for, for all that too if that's right. your purpose I, i've never i've ne- i've never looked at it like that until now 
Yeah. Until now, I mean, until now, I was always pushing Katrina. I mean, her and I used to almost be competitive financially to help help push each other to grow. And you chase your career, sure. I'm chasing my career. We're this power couple, all about that. Then all of a sudden, this kid comes in this world and shakes everything up. And it, it not only shakes up our day, our schedule, but just the way I think. Yeah. And 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 I know I know how important those early stages are and those interactions and the things that they piece together. And God damn, that there's I can't think of a single thing in 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 the world that is more important to me right now than than laying a good foundation like that. And man, if all I cared about, if all we cared about was pushing each other in yeah. uh, financial equality, uh, then that where, where where do I leave him? You know, just throw him in a daycare and he'll figure it out. Yeah. Don't worry, we're gonna well, we're gonna make plenty of money. You know, I, I mean. For, unfortunately, sometimes that's that's necessary, right? Unfortunately, yeah. sometimes both both parents have to work, or it's a single parent. Let's be honest. Mm. The vast majority of single parents out there are are women. In fact, I had this we conversation. Them, yeah. I had this conversation with my son uh, when we were uh, going to school. We were driving, and I was talking about the 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 values uh, of men. What do what are the values that men uh, provide? Like, what do we what are the things that we need to do? And I told him, I said, one of the most important values that a man can have is discipline. Now this is not because you know women can't provide discipline and men are only disciplined. It's not that at all. The reason why it's mo the most important value is because men more than women get pulled to not be disciplined. So I'll explain. So there's a term called Peter Pan syndrome. Mm. This typically doesn't apply as much to women. If you have a couple that gets divorced, the odds that it's the man that all of a sudden becomes non-existent in his child's life or is not no longer super there are far higher than for the woman. It's more, you see men get pulled more to being the 40-something-year-old the dude that's making tons of money, never got married, never had kids, banging all the hot chicks, hanging out. It's the, I don't have a biological clock, so I could always have kids whenever I want. And at some point, I'll have a lot of money and I'll marry some younger girl. And we can, so I'm just going to be this dude that has no responsibility and parties all the time. So, a man, for a man, discipline is extremely, extremely important. For a man, as he ages, this is what I, exactly what I told my son. I said, as a man ages, becomes more financially successful, he becomes more attractive to more women. That poses, a big challenge. It's the and think about it this way: in society, who are the men that are truly respected? I mean, really respected. Sure, we look at the Hugh Hefners and the Dan Bilzerians, and that looks cool. They got lots of followers, but in real life, the men that are respected are the ones that can have access to all that stuff. Yeah, but don't decide to be with one woman, decide to have children, decide to go to work, to come home at night to be with their family. Yeah. So it's all about against all the odds. It's all about discipline. And here's the thing about fatherhood, and this is the biggest lesson that you learn right out the gates, uh, and you, you just keep learning it, is this. Uh, it's hard. It's not nearly as exciting and fun, but it's way more meaningful. Yeah. Way more meaningful. Why is it hard? It's selfless. You got to... Here's the thing. Here's the big thing. If you want your kid to grow up to be a particular way, okay, you could coach them. You could talk to them. You could teach them. That has some value, but the truth is, at the end of the day, you gotta you, live it. You have to be the man you want your son to be, or you have to be the person you want your kids to grow up to be. So if you want God? them to be, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so if you want them to be responsible, honest, humble, here's a big one. I'll I'll I'll, I'll give you guys a, a like a personal story. Um, you know, I was like a couple weeks ago. Um, my kids they didn't do their chores or whatever, and I got irritated. And I actually got angry and raised my voice and blah, 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 type of thing. Now, I had every right to be annoyed. It was the, you know, the 10th time I had told them to do something. So I was definitely, you know, I was definitely valid, but I got angry. I yelled. Um, I, I let them see that I didn't control myself um, and just overacted, right? So after all was said and done, I went over to my kids. Uh, and this was later on when I calmed down. I went over to my kids, sat them down. And I said, hey, look, I said, um, I want to apologize to you guys. I said, I'm really sorry I lost my temper. I said, uh, the reason I got mad is valid. You guys should definitely listen to what I'm saying and be responsible. But the way I acted was super inappropriate, and I really apologize. Now, did I do that? Now, some men have trouble doing that because they don't want to show weakness. They don't want to show their kids. Nah, I don't apologize. I'm your dad. You do what I say. 
I did that because I wanted to show my kids that even their all-powerful father can humble himself and admit when he was wrong. What is that going to teach my kids? That's going to teach them to do the same thing. It's a very important lesson. So it's like, it makes you the best person you could possibly be. I'll tell you that right now because there's nothing you will, and I, you know what? You're a dad now, Adam, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. You, you, it's hard to explain to somebody who's never had kids the amount of love that you have for your child, what you would do for them. There's nothing in the world that you, that you wouldn't do when you really love your kids. So you want to talk about growing as a person. I think to myself, okay, instead of thinking, how can I teach them better? How can I tell them what to do? And you know, what kind of structure can I show them? That's, that's all important. I do that too. But oftentimes I'll sit down and be like, am I the man that I would want my kids to be? You know what that does to you? That makes you act a particular way even when they're not around. Mm -hmm. When you're out with your buddies, when you're hanging out, when you want to be lazy. You know, when I come, I did this uh, the other week when I was trying to get my kids off electronics. You know what I had to do? Get off myself. You know, I could tell them not to do it and then sit on my phone and watch TV. But I, instead I said, I got to be the man that I want them to, to grow up to be. So I got off and it was way, way, way more powerful. Here's the other thing is that being a father teaches you how to be brave. Okay. Not fearless. It's the opposite of that. It's how to be brave. You will never be vulnerable like you are when you're a dad. Uh, I didn't realize how invincible I was until I became a father. I, I, I thought I was, I thought I was vulnerable before, but now you got this baby that you're taking care of and this kid, all of a sudden you got fear. What's going to happen at school? Who are they going to talk to? Are they going to do drugs? Are they mm. going to make the right decisions? Mm -hmm. What about this? What if they get sick? What if they get hurt? You know, when you What's don't have that creepy van over there, <laughs> when you're, when you, when you don't have kids, you know, you're, you don't got no fear, man. What are you afraid of? You're by yourself, whatever. Maybe you got a girlfriend, ain't shit going to whatever. All of a sudden you have kids, you're scared as fuck from day one till the day that you probably die. You're always going to worry and have fear and fear presents the opportunity to be brave. So now I got to move through this world, a vulnerable, vulnerable person. I give the example of, of Superman before. This was a great conversation I had with my kid years ago when he, you know, he was in, I think it was a tournament. And after the tournament, I asked him how it was and he did well and all that. And he said, oh, I wish I was... Uh, brave like you, and I said, "Well, what do you mean?" He goes, "Well, you're not you're not afraid of anything." And I said, uh, "Do you think bra Superman is brave for running into a burning building? The fire can't do anything to him. The person who's brave is the fireman that walks in. That if he makes a wrong move, he dies." I said, "The bravery comes from being afraid, and you will never be more afraid and fearful than when you become a father." That's the biggest lesson that I learned from it. And boy, does that. That one keep getting taught to me. I'll well, tell you. you said something that I think is really important for who the person who's asking this question about becoming a new father that I think about all the time now that I never thought about, and you touched on it, and it's valuable enough to reiterate it. And that's, you know, when they're when they're this young right now and they can't speak and uh, tell you how they feel or what they notice or what they don't like, the only thing they can do is watch and emulate uh, what you do, and so. How you act, how you speak, the way you speak to your partner in front of them. Oh, that's a big one. The, mm -hmm. Yes. The way that is a big one. The way that a boy especially learns to treat women is the way that you treat uh, his mom. 100. And it starts now. Yes. Just because, I think this is the mistake that a lot of people make is they think that, oh, he's, you know, he's, he can't talk. He's unaware right now. Or you don't have any memories of when you were one years old or eight months old. So you just assume that you didn't. That stuff's getting hardwired in their brain. The way you socialize and interact with other people, especially the people that you're with on a daily basis, like your spouse. Um, the, the, the habits that you have, whether you're staring at someone asked me the other day if I was tired of watching all the, the kids cartoon stuff. And I said, honestly, I really haven't introduced that. He hasn't watched anything like that yet on TV. Uh, he's watched a little bit of sports when I'm watching it. So he gets to watch it. and, and, and do not think that I don't think about this too either. Like, like I, if basketball is on, like I, I allow basketball to be on being there. Cause I've wanted, I so badly want, <laughs> you want to bond with them. Oh yes. Right? And then I, we go down, we walk and go down the park and we play and Katrina and I will shoot hoops while he's in there and we're playing and interacting with him. Like, I mean, that's my way of hoping that this kid's going to go down that path is because he'll see positive, he'll connect positive things to that. He'll see mm -hmm. me loving his mother and having fun and us playing and enjoying it. 
And that's and the same thing with working out. Yesterday we were inside the gym. I think I did a little story. If you saw Katrina, the lights were all off and she's like pushing the stroller and shoulder pressing at the same time. And, you know, we couldn't get him to go to sleep while we were in here working out. And so she did what she had to do to try and get her workout in and still keep him happy at the same time. But like we we think about that a lot. I mean, we think about the if we have somebody at our house, um, you know, maybe we had like five, ten family members come over for whatever it is. And if one of the family members is talking drama and is talking shit or doing something like that, you'll see, I, Katrina does this all the time. She's really good about it. It's caught me to do it even now too, where she'll just kind of pick Max up and go outside the room. Won't make a big deal. I'm going to make it. They make, feel the energy, man. Fuck yeah, man. Like, and we think about these things. Like I, I think about those things that I never thought about before because I know that right now this kid is just a sponge and absorbing everything. And yes, I know. Uh, it'll never be 100% perfect. Yes, I know I'll probably stub my toe and swear and shit like that. I know that. But if I'm already at least being active and conscious about uh, the the conversations that I'm having in front of him, the my my attitude, the energy that I'm putting off in, in front of him, if, if I'm at least trying that right now, at least I could be, I'm a little bit better than the person who's not giving a shit and not paying attention to that. And I think as a father, it uh, is a parent in general that's that's extremely important to pay attention right, to. Right, but really, you know, the, the big one too is especially for those of you who are uh, divorced or you're not with the mother of your child, how you treat your child's mom is one of the main ways that they learn how to treat uh, women. Um, so if you want your kid, you want your son to grow up to be a good man and to treat women the right way, you better demonstrate that uh, the right way because that's how they learn. They learn from watching you um, so show respect, uh, be a good person. At the end of the day, that's uh, that's the poss- best possible thing you could do. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides, resources, and books. They're all totally free. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, me at mindpumpsal, and Adam at mindpumpadam.